In this video, we will discuss the pathological features in chronic kidney disease. So let's start with the gross features. So for gross features of chronic kidney disease, there are two possibilities. And by two possibilities, I mean that only one of these two changes can be present. And what happens is that in these diseases, the kidneys are symmetrically contracted. Why they are symmetrically contracted? Because the diseases affecting blood vessels or glomeruli will uniformly affect both the kidneys. So the kidneys are symmetrically contracted or atrophied. And secondly, the surfaces of kidneys affected by disorder of blood vessels or glomeruli are red brown and diffusely granular. Why they are red brown and diffusely granular? Because in such cases of chronic kidney disease, the glomerulosclerosis and arteriolosclerosis will cause thickening of the vessel wall. And this thickening of the vessel wall will impart a red brown or diffusely granular appearance to the kidneys. Now the second possibility is that now the second category of chronic kidney disease is chronic pyelonephritis. So if chronic kidney disease is caused by chronic pyelonephritis, then you will see unevenly involved kidneys that show deep scars. Why the kidneys are unevenly involved? Because if these are the kidneys, then the bacteria may affect one part of the kidney to a very large extent and they may spare other part of the kidney totally as well. So this is called uneven involvement. And such kidneys have deep scars. Deep scars means those scars that affect not only the renal tubules and interstitium, rather they also affect the renal pelvis, renal ureter and renal calyces. Now let's come to the microscopic features of chronic kidney disease. For microscopic features, the keywords to remember are chronic damage to glomeruli results in formation of scars and chronic damage to renal tubules and interstitium result in interstitial fibrosis. So this implies that in chronic kidney disease, damage is occurring at two levels. The first is at the level of glomeruli, which is resulting in formation of scars in place of these glomeruli. And the second focus of damage or second point of damage is at the renal tubules and renal interstitium, which is causing interstitial fibrosis. So the first keyword is damage at the level of glomeruli. So this glomerular damage will be visible as advanced scarring of glomeruli, sometimes to the point of complete sclerosis, which means that glomeruli will be damaged and they will be replaced by scars. And sometimes these scars cause the narrowing of the glomeruli to the point of complete narrowing. The second keyword is damage at the level of tubules and interstitium and this will be visible as interstitial fibrosis associated with atrophy and dropout of many of the tubules in cortex. So the renal tubules are being atrophied and drop out and they are being replaced by fibrosis in the interstitium. And along with this lymphocyte in lymphocytic infiltrates are present in the fibrotic interstitial tissue because the damage to the tubules will induce an inflammatory reaction which will cause lymphocytic infiltration. And these lymphocytes are actually the agents behind this interstitial fibrosis. So overall you see glomeruli affected by scars and you see tubules and interstitium being atrophied and replaced by fibrotic tissue. Thirdly, in cases of chronic kidney disease, the small and medium sized artery frequently are thick walled with narrow lumina secondary to hypertension. You know that one complication of chronic kidney disease is hypertension which is a very common complication in chronic kidney disease. So the secondary changes of hypertension are also present which are thick walled arteries with narrow lumen. So this concludes the pathological features of chronic kidney disease.